Burdines was a chain of department stores that opened in 1896 and closed in 2005. Thank you for your suggestions. Red. What is it, Scarlet? I'd love to be warm and wonderful to you, but it's so hot. No problem, Scarlet. Burdine ceiling fan sale is the answer. Oh, Red, I'll think about that tomorrow. They're featuring a 52-inch polished brass finish and wood fan. Save $60. Buy the 54-inch solid brass fan and save $140. Or the 52-inch chroma new side fan. They're all at Burdine's big sale on Kodap ceiling fans. This 42-inch rattan fan is nice. Sorry, Scarlet. These Burdine's fans are all mine. Red! Frankly, my dear, I don't give a fan. Oh, fiddle-dee-dee. After a winter freeze destroyed a citrus crop in 1895, retired Confederate Army General William Burdine turned his attention to the dry goods retail business. He had sent his son John to sell dry goods to the soldiers stationed at Miami and was pleasantly surprised when all of his merchandise sold out very quickly. William moved the family to Bartow, Florida, and formed a partnership to establish a dry goods store with Henry Payne in April of 1896. The partnership didn't last long, but it did provide William with enough experience to start a new retail operation. He opened a small store in central Florida, and in 1898, he and his son moved the operation to Miami, then a small fishing village that had just received its first rail line and incorporated as a city. When Burdine opened William Burdine and Son in Miami, the town had a population of less than 1,200 people. Funded with $300 capital and housed in a 1,250 square foot building at Avenue D and 12th Street, now Miami Avenue and Flagler Street, the dry goods store resembled a frontier trading post. Burdine and Son offered a limited selection of shoes, clothing, fabrics, and sewing notions, lace curtains, table linens, and umbrellas. Burdine catered to the local construction workers, soldiers, and Native American tribes who bought food with money obtained from the sale of alligator and otter skins. The city of Miami and Burdine and Son matured together during the early 1900s. The store's product offering expanded, and by 1912, the store had evolved into a full-scale department store with all of the modern merchandise available in large northern cities. Upon his father's death in 1911, Roddy became the owner of the company. Soon afterwards, Roddy led the expansion of Burdines. In 1912, Roddy built a new store on Flagler Street, the main commercial street in Miami. Five stories high, the Burdine Building became Miami's first skyscraper and the first building to have modern electrical installation. He coined the name Sunshine Fashions in reference to the clothing styles, colors, and fabrics appropriate to Miami's warm climate and casual atmosphere. Burdine and Son stocked high-quality European clothing in the latest fashions and began to display them in fashion shows in 1914. Excellent customer service became a hallmark of the store, as Burdine awarded bonuses to employees at every level. Burdine & Son became the largest volume retailer south of Washington, D.C. and east of New Orleans, earning Roddy Burdine the moniker Merchant Prince of Miami. Burdine & Son attained a reputation in northern states as a fashionable place to shop and dine. The company advertised the store in national magazines, urging potential customers to travel with empty trunks that could be filled with merchandise found only at Burdine & Son. One advertising slogan referred to Florida as the place where summer spends the winter. Because the store offered warm weather clothing all year long, Burdine & Son proved to be an excellent test market for manufacturers' lines of spring and summer clothing before delivery to department stores in the north. The company simplified its name to Burdine's Inc. in conjunction with the first public sale of stock in November of 1925. Proceeds from the stock offering was used to fund expansion as well as working capital. 
During the 1920s, Miami experienced an economic boom and Burdines found it necessary to expand the store. By then, a six-story, 138,000 square foot structure. A six-story addition provided another 70,000 square feet of retail space. Burdines opened new stores in West Palm Beach in 1925 and in Miami Beach in 1928. In 1929, Burdines introduced Sunshine Fashions, a brand of clothing tailored for warm weather. Including distinctive fabrics and colors, the brand soon became Burdines' trademark. In promoting Burdines as a prominent Florida store, Roddy Burdine commissioned an exclusive fabric design called Moon Over Miami for the popular song of the same name, available only as a clothing sold at that store. Burdine struggled through the Great Depression, but expanded again during the 1940s. The company closed the West Palm Beach store during the 1930s, but opened a store at another location in that city in 1941. The old building on Flagler Street was torn down in 1938 and a new building was erected in its place. A five-story annex would later be built in 1948 across the street, connecting the two buildings via underground and overhead passages. It was around this time that Burdines opened an international mail order program that served Latin America, resulting in a rise in popularity for the company. Customers included American military personnel stationed in Cuba who sent a supply ship to Miami every six months to place and fill orders at Burdines. The company developed a team board to consult on clothing selection, ensuring that store merchandise appealed to a new generation of shoppers. During the early 1950s, Burdines experienced financial difficulties which constricted cash flow and would lead to its sale to federated department stores. By November of each year, the company's credit line was exhausted, forcing buyers to hold orders until after the Christmas shopping season. Competition from a new Jordan Marsh store diminished Burdine's prevailing market share. Jordan Marsh offered shoppers an elegant new shopping environment, allowed the store to stock a wider selection of merchandise than Burdine's. After several years of resisting Federated's offers to acquire Burdines, in 1956, the company accepted. A stock swap valued at $18.5 million completed the merger in May of 1956. Federated provided capital investment, which significantly improved the merchandising mix at Burdines and enabled Burdines to expand with new stores. Operating in one of the fastest growing areas in the nation during the 1960s, Federated located new Burdine stores with demographic growth projections in mind. Burdines expanded throughout the state of Florida, initially in the greater Miami area, but during the late 1970s, the company expanded outside of Southeast Florida for the first time. New stores opened in Orlando and the Tampa Bay area. The latter included Sarasota, St. Petersburg, and Clearwater in Tampa. New stores opened during the early 1980s, including locations in Daytona Beach and Gainesville. Burdines opened stores in Fort Myers in southwest Florida and Melbourne along the central Atlantic coast. Locations in near Miami in southeast Florida included Boca Raton, Hollywood, and Cutter Ridge. Between 1977 and 1985, Burdines expanded its chain from 14 stores to 29 stores, ranging in size from 50,000 square feet to more than 200,000 square feet. In 1985, sales reached $757 million. As population growth in Florida attracted other department store chains to the state, Burdines developed the Florida strategy to differentiate the company from the competition. Identified as the Florida Store, Burdines highlighted the unique product offerings attributable to its experience and knowledge of Florida's tropical climate. When competing department stores from northern states offered dark colors and winter clothing, Burdines stocked merchandise suitable to Florida weather. Winter merchandise included shorts, 
bathing suits, cotton sweaters, and linen clothing, but few winter coats. Burdines designed store interiors to fit the tropical atmosphere of Florida, as well as the location of the store. Designer Kenneth Walker applied tropical hues such as coral, turquoise, and white, as well as beachside motifs such as ocean, dolphins, and palm trees. Officials at Burdines considered expanding to nearby states or Puerto Rico during this time, but ultimately decided to limit expansion to Florida, so not to dilute the Burdines brand identity. Growth came to a halt in 1988 when Campo Corporation acquired Federated through a leveraged buyout. The high level of debt forced Federated and Allied, acquired by Campo in 1986, into Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 1990. When Federated emerged from bankruptcy, Burdines thrived as a streamlined company of 44 stores with profit margins at 12%, compared to 8% in 1986. Sales had declined under Campo's ownership, attributed to lower quality, lower price merchandise meant to stimulate cash flow through high sales turnover. Burdine's attention returned to growth and expansion during the early 1990s. The company launched a new store concept called Burdine's Home Gallery. These stores offered furniture, home accessories, fine china, silverware, glassware, houseware, electronics, gifts, and floor coverings. In 1994, Federated purchased Macy's department stores, raising questions about the possibility of changing Burdine's to the Macy's brand. Burdines became Federated's most profitable division during the 1990s, even more profitable than Macy's and Bloomingdale's. In 2001, Burdines initiated uh, store renovations, which launched a sophisticated, contemporary look to reflect the international refined taste of the company's customer base, while maintaining the store's Florida identity. In May of 2003, Federated announced plans to convert Burdines to the Macy's nameplate. Beginning in February of 2004, Burdines 56 stores would operate under the name Burdines Macy's. Seven Macy's stores in Florida operated under the dual name as well. A year later, the Burdines name was dropped altogether. The former Burdines flagship store in downtown Miami operated under the Macy's name until 2018 when it was closed down as part of the restructuring of the department store chain. In August of 2019, it was announced that the construction permit was finalized for a new Ross store in the building. So what do you remember about this place? leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video below. And if you haven't already, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Another Eric C. Production.